the book of Deuteronomy chapter 13, again, verse 1 and 2, he talks about idolatry. So there's no time, we won't, we'll skip those two. He talks about, you know, idolatry, but then people have come out. Verse 3 says, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Today I want to tell you, my dear brothers, testing comes in different, different ways. It could come through a, a, maybe an illness or a, maybe a financial uh, failure or something a contrary thing, you know, something which is bad, let's put it that way. Testing can also come through something which is good. Hello? You went somewhere, you prayed and you got a miracle. Hello? Are you with me? Testing of God can come in different ways. That is why here he says, you know, you went through the desert. Desert they went through, I presume, a lot of trials and tribulation. They had to, they exercise their faith that the God is a faithful God. If he promised that he will take us to the land flowing with milk and honey, he will surely perform what he said. Now here are the dreamers. He says, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet. Because I will tell you today, there are more false prophets in this world than the true prophets. Are you with me? Hallelujah. And it says, or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Hallelujah. Because today, I want to tell you, many people are only driven by miracles. Are you with me? Dreams, visions. People see visions. People see good things. People see even physical miracles taking place. God says, don't go after that. Because I will work miracles in the angel of darkness, you know, uh, uh, that angel of light. He will come as an angel of light, the devil. Work miracles and he will test you whether you will go after those miracles or you will love the Lord thy God, his uh, Lord our God and be true and in obedience to God's word. So he will test you in both ways. So he says that he is only testing your heart to find out how much you love him, how much you are, you know, uh, uh, willing to obey God's word. Verse 4 of Deuteronomy 13 says, You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. That you need to understand the, the, the test that God gives is only to promote you, to bless you. And to give, you know, a, a greater degree or depth of knowledge and revelation of himself. I mean, because I'll tell you something. The fundamental, one of the things that uh, has given us very great encouragement is God's word in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. He says that all things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are the called according to his purpose. Are you with me? So if you believe that God has permitted this thing to come in our lives, that it will be for my good. Hallelujah. That is a testing that you will pass. And then you will find the blessings that the God, Lord will reveal to you. Are you with me? He will reveal the blessings to you that is stored up in that obedience and in that trust with the Lord and His Word. Deuteronomy 26, 17 says, Today, you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statute, his commandments and his judgments and that you will obey his voice. Hallelujah. This is actually, hallelujah, a real dedication. Dedication of the people saying that today you have, we have proclaimed, today you and I need to understand that we need to make this proclamation on a daily basis that we will obey your word. And we will follow your judgments and we will obey your statutes, keep your statutes so that you need to understand that we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has gone, the new has come. That's what Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, if anybody is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. A new creation quality is what? The old has gone and the new has come. So there should be a total change in our, in our benchmarks of Reliance in my benchmarks of judging what is good, what is bad, and deciding on what is the path that you take. If the message this year is walk of righteousness, this is all about it. Walking in righteousness. Are you with me? I tell you, the Lord is going to, he's just around the corner. Huh? <laughs> the Lord is just around the corner. <laughs> I tell you, because he's preparing his church all over the world. 
for the coming, for the coming. And therefore, nobody will have an excuse. I never heard it. I never thought about it. Hallelujah. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 4 says, For the Lord will greatly bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving to possess as an inheritance. Hallelujah. You need to understand one thing. What the Lord gives, he will always give you a blessing. Are you with me? For the Lord will greatly bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving to possess as an inheritance. He will bless you. This blessing comes when you are able to enter into the promised land. And the only way that you can enter the promised land is by the way of obedience. The way of love. Loving the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 5 says, only, now the condition comes. See, one is a promise, the other is a condition. Verse 5 says, only if you carefully obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe with care all these commandments which I command you today. Today you need to understand, you have an inheritance. You have an inheritance, but to qualify for that inheritance, you have to carefully obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe with care all these commandments which I command you today. Like I told you earlier, God's love is unconditional. Lord's blessings is conditional. Hallelujah. The book of Exodus chapter 24 verse 7 says, Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. Hallelujah. I'll read once more. Then the book, then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. So what are these people called? What are these people called? Hello, what are you called? They are the covenant people. Hello? <laughs> they are the covenant people. See, let's say, then the, he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people and they said, all that the Lord has said in this covenant, we will do and be obedient. Today, how many of the covenant people? Hallelujah. It is like sometimes people may say, you know, if it were a mixed crowd, some may not put up their hand because they may not belong to the nomenclature, the physical group which is identified as covenant people. But I want to tell you, everyone who has agreed to obey God's word is a covenant people. Are you with me? As much as our God has covenanted with us by this blood, we, in obedience to God's word, are also covenanted to Him. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So everybody should have no reluctance. My dear brother, my dear sister, you are also a covenant people. Covenanted with God, not with your pastor, not with your church or local. You are covenanted with God Almighty. Yeah. Hallelujah. And they are all called covenant people. Many people say Pentecost. Everybody is a Pentecostal. If you had the Holy Spirit in filling, are you with me? Because on Pentecost day, hallelujah, who was eagerly waiting for the Lord and his presence, the Holy Spirit, were waiting. That is called the Pentecost. So don't be ashamed. People relate the spiritual to the worldly. So Pentecostal means you are that IPC and all that. We, IPC is not the relevant thing. IPC is something denominational. But what is Pentecostal is a spiritual relationship being filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God. Similarly, covenant people is a spiritual relationship with Jesus who has covenanted with us that he is our Lord, Master, Savior, everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 8 of Exodus 24 says, And Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. Hallelujah. When you read verse 5, what, whose blood was that? Huh? It's the blood of an oxen. Moses took the blood and sprinkled it. He killed an oxen as a sacrifice. Took the blood and sprinkled it and said, this is the blood of the covenant. But we, my dear brothers and sisters, have a much bigger and greater covenant. 
Hallelujah. A covenant not established on the blood of bulls and goats. We have a covenant established on the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why Luke 22 verse 20 says, Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. Hallelujah. So we are the covenant people of the new covenant. Are you with me? The old covenant, they said, we will do all the things that what God, the Lord has said. And they are the covenant people of the old covenant. We are the covenant people of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to understand that very clearly. That the covenant people of the old covenant could not keep those covenants. Are you with me? That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we often say, we, you know, that covenant which is given by obedience to the Ten Commandments was a, 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 a ministry of condemnation, a ministry of death. Because it was covenanted between what? Moses said, you, we have covenanted with God. Are you with me? Hello? Hey, it's like this, no? This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you. So it is a covenant between God and man. Man cannot keep covenants. Hello? Man cannot keep covenants. The second covenant, the new covenant, is a covenant between the father and his son to save us. Are you with me? And that being between God the father and God the son is a covenant which will never be broken. That is why God says, my words will never pass away. Are you with me? Hallelujah, hallelujah. You need to understand the significance of that. The book of Le Leviticus 18, 4 says, You shall observe my judgments and keep my ordinances. To walk in them, I am the Lord your God. Please don't misunderstand. Whatever covenant is there in the old covenant is still valid. But man is not able to keep the covenant. That is the difference. Hello? When they said that we will keep all the commandments, all the covenants, he is not able to fulfill his part. That is why he is a transgressor of the covenant. That is why he deserves death. Because the wages of transgression is transgression is sin and the wages of sin is death. Because man could not keep the covenant. But Jesus kept the covenant by being the substitutionary sacrifice for every shortcoming of ours in keeping the covenant. Hello, are you with me? That is why the new covenant is ours. Hallelujah. Jesus is a propitiation for our transgressions. Hallelujah. Psalm 48 verse 14 says, For this is God, our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. So you need to understand, our focus, our focus as far as Jesus is concerned, is not for a time or a season. Is until death. Even unto death. Even one time wise unto death. Even consequence wise. Even it means I have to die. He is my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 2 and 3. Again it says that the Lord, he is making a new coming. I think we'll just read that out. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 2 and 3. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive. So that is a covenant made by God with man in Mount Horeb. But the new covenant, like I told you, is a new covenant made in the blood of Jesus. The very blood of Jesus. The two parties of the covenant are unfailing, are faithful. There is no question of the covenant being broken. The book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song and he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. You need to understand that he is everything. He is everything. The psalmist was able to understand that he has been so faithful to his father, to his father's father. Like that. You know, from the Abraham onwards. Hallelujah, the faithfulness of God was so known and revealed to man that he was able to say that he is my God and my father's God. 
Hallelujah. He's a strength in my song. That whenever you see, think about what the Lord has done, there will be a new song in your mouth. How many have a new song every day? Amen. Hallelujah. We have reason to thank the Lord every day. Hallelujah. Because it is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing what? Praises to Him, O Most High. So if you praise Him, you sing Him with praises. To declare His what? Loving kindness when? In the morning. And when you declare His loving kindness in the morning, God says what you declare will happen. And what, therefore His faithfulness you will be able to experience every night. This covered in promise. So every day we should declare the faithfulness of our Lord. Psalm 147 verse 19 says, He declares His word to Jacob, His statute and His judgments to Israel. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. Once you have this revelation knowledge of Jesus, and once you have a personal loving relationship with Him, He will reveal Himself to you. Are you with me? He will reveal every area of His life. He will re reveal everything that you need to know. He will give you supernatural wisdom that comes from above. Hallelujah. He will give you whatever you need to sustain you. Verse 20 of Psalm 147 says, And He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known him. I want to tell you, he has not dealt thus. Thus meaning with loving kindness and tender mercies. You are the special people. You are extraordinary people. The recipients of extraordinary blessings of God. And the psalmist says, he has not dealt like that. Never had that type of a relationship with any other nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them at all. They have no revelation of Jesus. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, uh, last, last Sunday, Pastor Rajesh was talking about Jehovah, Sabaoth, S-A-B-A-O-T-H. That is the Lord of hosts. The book of Zachary says, it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So the Lord of hosts is the host, is the Lord of the whole, the spiritual realm. Are you with me? Hallelujah. In, when you read the word, there are so many examples of that. Starting with Hannah. That is where the first time the Lord of hosts is mentioned in the scripture. But it continues, continues on and on. Hallelujah. When you read, when you read the book of Kings, 2 Kings chapter 6, Elijah, the prophet, was surrounded by the a Syrian army, Syrian army. Are you with me? But what the servant could not see, Elisha could see. That is, the Lord of hosts was there. Hallelujah. With chariots of fire. Are you with me? Hallelujah. We need to understand. Again, when you look at every, so many places in the scripture, you will find that the Lord of hosts is interfering. Today, like the pastor was saying, where you have a problem, the Lord of hosts will send his angels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At one place in the scripture it says, one angel killed how many people? One lakh, if I'm not mistaken, 86,000 people. Are you, are you with me? Another place, uh, one angel killed all the firstborn in Egypt. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is one angel. My dear brothers, I want to tell you, the Lord of hosts, uh, if he is with you on your side. That is why the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 31 says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Can anybody be against you? Nay. Nee. Nobody can be against you. Hallelujah. So we need to understand. This is a revelation that God gives. When you say, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has a human heart perceived what God has kept in store. God has kept in store himself for you. And with himself comes everything that belongs to him. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Every power in heaven. Hallelujah. The Lord of hosts will be with you. That's why God says, do not fear, I am with you. <laughs> Are you with me? Hallelujah. We need to understand, there is no need to fear. Say, no need to fear. It is actually saying, have faith. <laughs> Are you with me? Because faith and fear are incompatible. Fear is the opposite of faith. So, no need to fear means what? I have faith. Hallelujah. So, we are a special people, right? Hallelujah. And we should really have a special relationship with that person. Are you with me? Hello? If you and I are considering us, ourselves, 
as special people as far as God is concerned, then the only way you can reciprocate that is to have a special place for that God in your heart. Amen. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Love Him above all things. Love Him with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that when you love the Lord, hallelujah, He will release His blessings upon you. Hallelujah. Blessings like they say in the book of Malachi chapter 3. What does it say? He will open the windows of heaven and He will pour out such blessings upon you that you will have no room to store it. You will say, you know, I'm exaggerating. Madi, 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 madi. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I cannot even comprehend it. In the Bahrain, the Samyam Vidam. When you are putting your trust, when you are putting Jesus above all in your life. Hallelujah. He's such a wonderful God. Amen. He's such a loving God. Pardon me? Hallelujah. He's so great. What we need to have is just the relationship with Him. What we need to have is just a revelation of Him. And once you are able to seize the revelation, catch it, catch it, and then you'll know how loving He is, how faithful He is. Is our God faithful? Amen. 